Well, hello everyone, it's Nina, and I'm here today with Newton's Nook Designs. Today is our Sweet Treats blog hop, where we're featuring all sorts of really fun ways to be able to package up your treats and candies to give to your loved ones for Valentine's Day. In today's tutorial, we're going to be using a bunch of new Newton's Nook stamps and dies to create this, so let's get started and check it out. To create our box, we're going to be using the 123 punch board. This has all sorts of really neat ways for you to be able to create a variety of boxes, bows, and envelopes to use in your projects. I'm going to be starting off with this white 8 inch piece of metallic cardstock, and I'm going to be lining this up on score line L on the left hand side. We're going to then punch it and score along score line A, which is right there on the left hand side. Give that a nice crease, and then we will go ahead and score on score line B, which is on the other side. And we're going to repeat this all the way around all sides of this piece of paper. So here's our finished piece so far. You can see we've got it halfway finished. I'm going to then line this back up inside my punch board and we're going to be lining this up along the lines that we created on score lines A and B. We're going to line those back up and punch right there in the center so we create another punch right on the other side parallel to the one that we had created earlier. We're going to do that again on all four sides. So there's the finished piece all scored and punched ready to go. Next we're going to take some scissors and we're going to cut along the score lines of two of the flaps. So we're going to cut along the score lines here all the way to the center of the box. Then we're going to rotate it 180 degrees and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. For the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and fold on all the score lines to put the box together for you so that way you can see how it's going to end up working out. So once I've got everything folded, I'm going to line these up and what we would have done, we would have put tape or adhesive on the flaps that would hold the sides of the box together. You can see the flaps right here. You would put it on the front side and then go ahead and attach it down. We'll be doing that later. In the meantime, we're gonna do some stamping using some of the Newton's Nook stamps that I mentioned earlier. I've got here the Sweetheart Tales stamp set and also the Darling Duos. There's a bunch of little images in each of these stamp sets that we're gonna be using to create a background. Now I didn't end up using all of the images included in all these sets but you can pick and choose the variety of different images that you want to use to create your backgrounds. Before I get started though, I want to use my EK Success powder tool to go ahead and prep the surface of the paper because we're going to do some heat embossing and I want to cut down on any static. Alright, so now we're going to start our stamping. I've got my Versamark ink and I'm going to go ahead and start randomly stamping all of these bigger images onto my paper. I'm starting off with the bigger images because that helps then when you go in with the smaller images to just fill in the spaces and you get the areas much more cleanly covered when you start with your bigger images and then work down to your smaller images to fill in the smaller spaces. So I'll just keep repeating this until I have the entire front covered with these gold embossed images. Next, I'm taking some Altenew dye ink. Now, because this is a slick surface, this Altenew dye ink is going to be allowing me to heat emboss onto the images that I stamped down. However, if you aren't using a slick cardstock like I am, you can use a pigment ink and get the same effect. So I'm just in heat embossing these with clear embossing powder. I'm going to take some cotton candy dye ink as well. I'm going to do the same thing with some other smaller images. Finally, I'm going to take this B Mine and some more Versamark ink and I'm going to silver heat emboss these. So we've got our panel all covered with our images and we're going to go ahead and start putting this together. I'm going to take this front side up and I'm going to take some adhesive and run it along the sides of each of these little flaps. This is going to put down the adhesive to hold our box together. I'm then going to fold the two sides over. I'm going to pull this up so that way then we can bring the other sides of the box up and attach them to the flaps. This will hold our box together and keep it from falling apart. Alright, so now we're moving on to the tag. I've got some red Simon Says Stamp cardstock here and I've got a little mini tag die from Pretty Pink Posh. I'm going to go ahead and run these through my Big Shop machine. I've also taken the little embellishment pieces that go with that mini tag die set 
and I'm going to use the little circle. Because there's enough space between the circle and the star, I can use this as a little hole for my tag to be able to thread then my cord through. So I'm just going to run this through my machine, and then I'll pull it out and you can see it creates this nice little hole for us to be able to do some threading. I've got a little piece of glitter cardstock here and the little love die from the Newton's Nook Designs Darling Hearts die set, and I'm going to go ahead and die cut that. Using some candied apple distress ink and a stencil from Hero Arts, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in some color to this little tag. You could have left this plain, but I like adding a little bit of extra texture and pattern to this tag to keep it from being too plain. I've then got the little hearts that I've die cut here. These are from a memory box die, and I'm going to go ahead and add these onto my tag using some foam tape. When I first did this, I wanted to put the little heart on two pieces of foam tape to give it an extra bit of pop, but it ended up being too bulky for me, so I ended up taking that one extra piece of foam tape off of that little tiny heart and just left it with one piece, just like the other big white heart. For the little love die, I'm going to go ahead and use some PPA matte adhesive, and I'm going to run this along here to go ahead and adhere this down onto the white heart. I love the PPA glue because it's a strong matte adhesive that doesn't show up when you've used it on projects. With some Wink of Stella, I'm going to go ahead and apply this down onto portions of this tag to give it a little sparkle and shine. This is the clear Wink of Stella brush. I love using this on pretty much everything I make. Finally, I'm going to add some twine to my little box here. You could use ribbon or whatever other type of string element that you have, but I'm just going to thread this little bit of baker's twine through to go ahead and tie my box together. And that's going to do it. So I hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to stop over at my blog where you can get more information on this project, including the products used. You can also find more information on the blog hop, and you can see more inspiration using Newton's Nook design products along the way. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and here's another video that you might be interested in using Newton's Nook design products to create some more festive and fun tags. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.